Dr. Ken here with you, DC lesson at number six, part B, and we're continuing with the series circuit. So about this lesson, we're going to describe how to apply Ohm's law to calculate current voltage resistance values around a series circuit. So if you're following with the textbook, this is section 6.4 and 6.5, so voltage basically in a series circuit, and then we're gonna kind of do a summary. So voltages in a series circuit. So the voltage total is the applied voltage, and it causes the current to flow in the circuit. Now, this is something that students sometimes seem to get um, confused or uh, get a little bit mixed up on, and they think that the voltage drops across the components have something to do with pushing the current through the circuit. In actual fact, it's the exact opposite. The, uh, I'll just fix that. The power supply, I'll turn that pen back on again. This is where the potential difference occurs that pushes the current into the circuit and then back again here. The voltages you see across each of the components are the result of the current traveling through the resistance. So the applied voltage or the power supply, so in this particular case the power supply is sent to 20 volts, it's that 20 volt potential that is actually driving the current through the circuit. And as that current passes through a 20 ohm resistor in the circuit, a certain voltage will appear across the component. So there's voltage that is applied to the circuit and there are voltage drops around the circuit. They are two different forms of voltage. And it's important to kind of get those square in your head as early as possible. So volts total, in this case 20 volts, is the applied voltage. It causes the current to flow around the circuit and that current flows around the circuit and it flows through R1, R2 and it flows through R3 and as it does so other voltages are developed across the resistance as a result of the current. Now again from a physics perspective I can't overemphasize that electricity is all about the current. The current is what does the work at the end of the day. So let's not get confused that there are two types of voltage. There's the applied voltage to the circuit and then there, there are voltage drops around the circuit. So V1, V2, V3 are the voltage drops. The voltage drop is caused by the current flowing through the resistance. which introduces us to a new law. It's called Kirchhoff's voltage law. So there's a Russian gentleman that came up with this law. And Kirchhoff's law basically says the algebraic sum of the voltage drops in a series circuit must equal the applied voltage. So there's those two different voltages. So when you add up all the voltage drops around a circuit, it must equal the applied voltage. So like likes Ohm's law, it can never be wrong. It's the way the physics works. The voltage drops around a series circuit can never total any more or any less than the applied voltage now in a DC circuit. So we should put a little caveat on here. In a DC circuit. And you may get the answer to that, or why I'm saying that, later on when you do AC circuits. So put another way, this is Kirchhoff's law diagrammatically. It doesn't matter which of these voltage drops you choose to be the source. So if we say A to B is the supply voltage, 
here, then A, B plus C, D plus C, A must equal the applied voltage. So all the voltages around the series circuit, so if we have a battery, for example, and we have a resistor, and we have a resistor, and we have a resistor, and for example, if our battery is supplying three volts, so no, sorry, I'll make it nine volts to make the, the maths easier. Make that nine volts, then we go maybe can have three volts here, three volts here, and three volts here. Now the voltage at the supply, would you believe it, because it's the internal voltage of the supply, it's minus nine volts. So three plus three plus three is nine. So if I simply do that mathematically, I've got minus nine plus nine equals zero volts. Because that internal voltage of the battery is actually a minus voltage. So when I add them all up, I end up with this nice zero. So my VAB was minus nine. This was three, this was three, and this was three. And I end up with a total of zero volts. That's how Kirchhoff's voltage law operates. So calculating voltages across resistors now. So again, this is a just a typical example. And here we've got our 20 volt supply. And again, not too innovative here. We've just got 20 volts. We've got 20 ohms, 30 ohms and 50 ohms. And we've got to work out what the voltage drops are. So quick and easy, we just add up what the total resistance is. So R total is add up the three resistors, R1, 2, and 3. So that gives us uh, 100 ohms, doesn't it? 50 plus 30 plus 20. We're going to end up with 100 ohms is our total resistance. We can then use that to find out our total current, if you remember, current is equal to the voltage total divided by the resistive total. So we know we've got 20 volts on our power supply and we've got 100 R. Therefore, 20 divided by 100 means we've got 0.2 or 200 milliamps. We want to find out what the voltage drop across each resistor is. That's not too hard either because we know that volts equals R multiplied by I. In this particular case, it's, let's say voltage one, it's going to be resistor one, multiplied, sorry, resistor one, multiplied by current number one, and current number one is the same as current two, current three, etc., etc. So we're going to end up with voltage one is equal to 20 ohms simply multiplied by our current which is 0 0.2 and that's 4 volts and you can see there's the answer right there there's your 4 volts so the same for V2 it's just going to be 0.2 times 30 giving us 6 volts and finally the 50 ohms or the 0.2 multiplied by 50 ohms giving us 10 volts and if we want to double check ourselves we then just add up the three voltages so uh, 10 plus 6 is 16 plus 4 is 20 volts and Kirchhoff's law tells us that uh, we applied 20 and we had 20 drop around the circuit therefore yes 
we have all the voltage drops accounted for around the circuit. So the applied voltage is the same as all the external voltage drops summed together. So uh, what if we uh, were given some information like this, where we have uh, an example to find the applied voltage drops around a circuit. In this particular case, it would be simply a matter of adding up V1 plus V2 plus V3. Example, find the applied voltage. Well, we know that R1 has 11 volts across it. We know that R2 has 23 volts across it. And we know that R3 has 6 volts across it. So it's a simple matter of 11 plus 23 plus 6. So our 11 plus 23 plus 6, answer, 40 volts around the circuit. So there must be 40 volts applied to the circuit to meet Kirchhoff's voltage law. Now going the other way, here's an example of finding the voltage drops around a circuit. So in this particular case, we've got 42 volts applied. We know that one resistor has 9 volts, the other one's got 14, but what's the voltage drop across V2? Well, it's pretty simple, isn't it? You just take 42, subtract 14 and 9, and whatever you're left with has to be the third voltage. So we know that Vt equals V1 plus V2 plus V3. And if we want to manipulate the formula around, we know that Vt equals V total minus V1 plus V3. So we end up with 42 minus 9 and minus 14, giving us a voltage of, there must be 19 volts across R2 because of Kirchhoff's voltage law, that all the voltage drops around a series circuit must add up to the applied voltage, giving you a net result of zero volts around the entire circuit. So how does Ohm's law and Kirchhoff's laws relate to each other? So if you know the voltage drop across a known resistance in a series circuit, the current in the resistor can be found with standard Ohm's law. This current is also the circuit current. Okay, now you might look at that paragraph and go, yeah, 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 yeah. I get it. I get it, Dr. Ken, I get it. But it's actually very important to understand that in a series circuit, the current in the circuit or in any part of the circuit is known as the circuit current. So this term here will crop up all the time in series circuits. Circuit current means the circuit at any point in the, the sorry, it means the current at any point in the circuit and any component within that circuit. Knowing the current, lets you calculate the total resistance of a circuit, assuming you know the supply voltage. Again, just Ohm's law. So here's another little example. We want to find R total, but this time we're given the voltage across R1. We know the resistance of R1 is 40 ohms, and we know nothing about the rest of the circuit, except that we have a total of 50 volts applied. So we should be able to work out the total current because the current, let me turn that pointer on again, if we can calculate out the current through this component with this information, then it's the current everywhere. So we simply go 10 volts divided by our 40 ohms, that's our 40 ohms there, and that equals 0.25 or 250 milliamps in the resistor. So we know there's 250 milliamps in this resistor. If there's 250 milliamps in that resistor, then there's 250 milliamps in this lead. There's 250 milliamps in this resistor. There's 250 milliamps in this lead. And there's 250 milliamps in this resistor. Has to be, because that's how series circuits and DC physics work. So, voltage total, we can check ourselves, 50 
divided by 0.25 because we know we have uh, 50 volts applied so we can work out now the R total and we know that the whole impedance of the circuit or the whole total resistance of the circuit is 200 ohms we know this makes up 40 and these other two together add it up make the other 160 ohms we don't know what proportion but we know that the R total for the whole circuit is 200 ohms so Kirchhoff's voltage law says that voltages are added algebraically which means you have to consider the polarity of the voltages I mentioned that before if there is more than one voltage source supplying a circuit the total voltage is the algebraic sum of the voltage sources yes we can have more than one voltage source in a series circuit and here's an example of that on the left hand side I've got a 3 volt source and a 1.5 volt source they're connected in series and the polarities follow each other so plus goes to minus and then the plus goes to the load and then back from therefore I simply add these two together and I get 4.5 volts but note here what's happened now the 3 volt battery has remained or the 3 volt supply has remained the same so this one is the same but this one is being turned upside down so you can see now minus plus and a plus so I've come through here the two pluses are together so when I do the addition to this circuit it's 3 volts plus minus 1.5 because I've turned it around and if I take 3 volts and I add minus 1.5 it's like subtracting 1.5 and I end up with 1.5 so the second example has the voltage supply reversed and you're simply going to get voltages the other way around and yes you can get circuits that do this so summing up our findings for resistance the total resistance RT is the sum of each of the resistance values so series circuit that always remains true when all resistors in a circuit are equal then you can just go R total is equal to R times the number of components the resistance total is always the voltage total on the current and we can also express that as current total but current total and current are the same thing in a series circuit where voltage T is the applied voltage individual resistance values are found using Ohm's law current in a series circuit is always the same in all parts of the circuit doesn't matter where you are always going to be the same current is found using Ohm's law so when all the totals are known we can simply go current is equal to V total on R total so we know that I equals V on R that's the general Ohm's law and then we just got to make sure we're using V total on R total or if we actually know the individual values we can actually also go voltage 1 divided by resistance 1 will also give you the same value in a series circuit so these two things are not working out different things they're working out exactly the same thing just from slightly different perspectives so this is the same it's the same current the sum of the voltage drops in a series circuit always equals the applied voltage so the voltage total is always 
all the voltage drops around the circuit all added up together and that's called ohms sorry Kirchhoff's voltage law and then finally voltage total equals the current multiplied by the resistance total and of course that again is just ohms law to find the voltage drop with Kirchhoff's voltage law you transpose the equation in terms of the unknowns that you have so if you're looking for whichever voltage it is it's going to be the voltage total minus the sum of the remaining voltages it's almost kind of common sense and voltage 1 will always equal the current that's the current total current in a series circuit multiplied by R1 for that particular part of the circuit and again that's just direct Ohm's law so this brings us to the end of uh, lesson 6 I hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit about Kirchhoff's voltage law and voltage drops around a series circuit